Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. My name is Howard and today we're going to be completing the Try Hack Me Red Team Capstone Challenge. This is going to teach us some red team skills and also some pen testing skills. If you have never gone through a full end-to-end -end pen test or end-to-end -end red team engagement, this is going to show you some of the skills that might be required to do so. As you can see, I have not done it. I just started the lab. This is a paid lab for people who need to pay. But if you don't have a paid out subscription, you can watch my videos or you can also pay and do what I'm about to do here. So our first task is to make sure that we read everything here. Just like with any pen testing or red team engagement, being able to understand what the objectives are and also what access you have and what you don't have is very important. For example, is this a black box pen testing, gray box pen testing, or is this a white box pen testing? So here they are the skills that we'll learn. We'll learn about OSINT, enumeration, phishing, evasion. So I'm expecting Windows Defender to be enabled here. We bypass it. We're going to use a C2 framework. We'll probably use Metasploit or maybe something like uh, Havoc when, when the time comes. But please read through this. This will really help you a lot. They do suggest that you should have completed the red team learning path. And if you see here, I've done about, what, 85% of this. So please complete this. It will teach you all, if not most of what you need here. I'm at 85%. I still need to finish these here. But they do give us a few things that I want to make sure that we pay attention to. See, they say, this room is rated as hard, but it's really not. Each individual component is going to be easy. In the project brief here, there's a few things that they talk about. Like there's a corporate network for the company. And then we also have the bank. And our goal here, which is to evaluate whether the corporate division can be compromised. And if so, determine what the methodology is. So we'll do that. There's also things that you should not do, like the project scope. They say, please do not attack these machines here. So security testing on the VPN is not allowed. Attacking mailboxes of other red teamers or on the machine is not allowed. And a bunch of other things that are not allowed here. Let's make sure that you read this. But for the sake of our time, because I know you can read, I'm just going to jump in and get us set up. First, you can access this using the VPN or you can use the attack box. I like the VPN. This is my personal Kali that I'm running this on. This is in VMware. You can use the attack box if you want, but you can use a VPN by going to the access, which they link here. And in the access section, you can go ahead and download the configuration for the networks under networks. Choose the red team capstone here. You need to have joined the room. If this doesn't show up, go and start the room, like click join the room and then download the configuration. Once you download the configuration, what you can do is in your Kali, I have the configuration in my VPN folder. And as you can see, I use this folder for most of my VPN, like hack the box dedicated, uh, offsec is in here. Try hack me is in here. So all my platforms where I practice. And for that, I just went ahead and did this something like this. Open VPN, the name of the red team capstone VPN, and it connects. And once it connects, you can check to make sure that you have the IP address by typing IPA. And you notice that you have a capstone IP address. And that capstone IP address is what we we'll use. So we have 10, 50, 115, and whatever that is there. So we we'll use this to get our reverse shells and everything else. All right. So the first part is done. We connected. That's what they're talking about here. And they ran the connection. We can verify that we are connected by making sure that it says connected here. When you come back. So if you're ever in doubt, when you come back to access, choose that red team there under networks. It should say connected here and online before you start anything else. And once that is done and you are happy with it, go ahead and in here, in try hack me, you will need to come down here and answer these questions. Just click on the thing that say, I understand that the project and I've read, click on the I understand button. I will register for the challenge and verify that my access is working before moving on. And if you did check that, and when you do, you will end up with these IP addresses in this panel. These will not show up unless if you answer those two questions down there. 
and this will show you some IP addresses that you have access to. So you have 10 200 118 18 and 10 200 118 11 and also 13. Those are showing up after we did that. And then after we do that, we can go ahead and get started with our initial access. Okay, so now that we verified that we are actually connected and it says connected here, we'll move on to the next part. They do tell us that you need to come in here and SSH using this username and password so you can connect to this lab. So what we would do is they said that the IP address is going to be .250, but that will be the same subnet as the rest of the machine. So our IP address is 10201118250. So we will SSH at 10201118250. And then so e citizen 10208250. If you get that one right, it will ask you to put the password. Then we can come back down here, copy the password that they gave us, and hit enter. So this will say welcome. This is us patching in. Uh, you will first need to choose number one to register. Provide your TriAcme username. This will be any username really, but mine is IT Security Lab. IT Security Labs. And it's saying it already exists, so let me choose a different one. IT SL. So this will create a user. Okay. It looks like something happened. It, it's errored out, but it's also <laughs> getting me in. So this is like, hey, you have connected. This is not something that you do in a regular engagement. This is just for the CTF, but it's complaining about an un unknown user. So use the same username as that you have on TriAcme and you end up with a username and password. This is very important. So I would copy this and document it somewhere else. And you will not get a bunch of these errors because I made up a name by myself. But your name should be whatever your username is and you have officially completed some of the registration stuff. So if you come back here, we have now patched in. You will know that you have patched in when you can access the machines. So for example, if we go all the way up here, we have 10 200 118 12. If you go to your browser, 10.200.118.12. If that machine had a website like this one does, oh, I didn't know that, I just guessed here, you'll be able to access it. So we know we can access things. In fact, 12 years VPN portal. Okay. So we know that we have those three IP addresses. Good. So now that we did that, let's make sure that we can get started properly because we did some admin work. We end by making sure that we did everything correctly. And also we look at the summary and it says here, make sure you understand the points below before starting. If any points are is unclear, please reread this task. So this looks like something important for us. The purpose for this assessment is to evaluate a division and make sure that it's compromised. Okay. To demonstrate the compromise, a simulated fraudulent money transfer must be performed. Okay. Against the SWIFT backend system. So we should do a money transfer after we're done compromising this system. The SWIFT backend infrastructure is secure but exposes internal web application used by the reserve to facilitate the transfers. A general process for transfers involves the separation of duties to ensure one employee cannot both capture and approve transfer numbers. You have been provided with some information and tools that you might find helpful. I won't be using any of their tools. I just want to figure it out as I go, but I will look at them if I get really stuck. After gaining access to the network, you, you need to register for the challenge through its e-citizen communication portal via uh, provided SSH details. I did that. You need to prove compromise by performing specific steps on the host that you have compromised. These steps will be provided to you through the e-citizen portal. Okay, so now that we are registered and everything is working, uh, we will move on here. The flex submission. So what are they talking about? In order to prove that you have compromised the state of the government, they require you to interface with e-citizen platform with specific location 
Once you have compromised a host, you should initiate an SSH connection to the East Citizen platform and perform the requested action to prove you have compromised the host, after which a flag will be submitted. There, are may, there may be different parts to this, okay? To get new flags, you need to compromise additional host or systems. The flags indicate progress and challenges and leads to goal execution. You can follow any path you like and get the flags. Not flags are provided both for initial foothold, low privilege access, and full compromise, administrative access. For certain cases, your foot, foothold may also be directly provide you root access pretty much. The flags are not in any particular order. You may find your compromise. Okay, sure. So let the heist begin. 